Hey, good morning everybody. How great to see you on this very snowy day out by me. I'm super glad that you're here. And uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Rita Hickman. I'm a body mind expert. I'm a shiatsu massage therapist. And uh, my passion and career for the last 12 years has been helping women um, deal with the stress they have in their lives, whether it's, hey, Lindsay, whether it's from narcissism, whether it's from being a caregiver, whether it's from a chronic illness or chronic pain. Hey, Gretchen, my job is to help women understand how they actually work. And when you understand how you work, hey, Jean, when you understand how you work, you're able to um, really uh, become the best version of yourself. You're able to make better choices. You're able to think clear. Your body is moving you forward instead of holding you back. Hey, Jojo. So I'm really glad you're here today. So tonight we're doing a program, a workshop, online workshop on how women can stop a narcissist from ruining their health. You know, over the last, as I said, over the last 12 years, I've worked with a lot of women. And one of the big reasons that they come to me, no matter where they're at in their life, is that uh, having a narcissist in their life is what pushed them over the edge. Hey, Dina, nice to see you. You know, it could be a parent. You know, you were born into the family. It could be a brother or sister, you know, where they were dealing with uh, mental illness. It could be a coworker or a boss. It could be somebody that you ended up marrying and didn't realize that they had as many um, difficulties as they do. You know, there's thousands of reasons, good reasons why we have narcissists in our life. You know, when I was promoting this workshop, um, it actually got a, a huge, huge amount of feedback. Uh, anything from, yes, I've been through the process, I got out of a relationship, I got healthy, I got you know my life healthy, and now I'm with a great guy. Um, I hear that. Uh, and I've also heard people who were, you know, narcissists can never change, you're a charlatan, you're a fake, um, you're preying on women who are, you know, feeling victimized. I had a psychologist, you know, come back with me at that. It was really super interesting. Um, how everything uh, came together and all the different uh, opinions and emotions that are around this topic. And that's why I think it is so, so important to start this discussion. And so originally I was going to do the workshop all by myself, you know, but then what happened was I realized that this needed to be a bigger discussion that was bigger than just what I do and who I was. And um, so I invited some of my very close body mind friends. Hey, Patty, like Patty Mason, who's on today. You know, I invited some friends who are experts in this field as well because they've lived through it, they've dealt with it, and they've gotten to the other side of being in narcissistic relationships. And sometimes, you know, like me, uh, you're able to, you change how you engage with the situation and the person that, uh, that's in your life wants to change too and you're able to make something great. Other times, you know, the other person just doesn't matter enough for you to put in all of that energy and pain and, and difficulty. Hey Tara, Tara's on too. So Tara's gonna be on the workshop tonight too. Hey Leslie. You know, sometimes you can't turn it around. Sometimes it's not worth it because it's dangerous or violent or it's ruining your health. You know, but a lot of times we're stuck where we're stuck until we're healthy enough until we can move forward. So tonight's workshop is all about the tricks, the tools, the mental paradigms, the uh, physical things. Hey, Peggy, the physical things that you can do as a woman that will keep you healthy if you feel like you have to have a narcissist in your life. Um, it was super interesting for me to, because, because part of this process of me marketing this workshop was um, bringing some narcissists out of the woodwork. And it was crazy, hey Tabitha, because yesterday I had my very good friend Patty Mason on happen chance for a live stream interview and she was able to help me through my process of going through it. So I had this woman, uh, on my little ad, you know, for my for the workshop that we're doing, um, totally come after me. And it reminded me of 
when I had been through my narcissistic relationships, when I had been, you know, you're just standing there, minding your own business, doing your own thing, and somebody comes in and wham, and they slam you in the face. So if you have any experiences with narcissists, you know what this is like. You're completely unprepared. It knocks you on your butt. It makes you sick. It gives you a headache. And you start to sit there and every time something happens, you trigger again and you go into fight or flight. You start to freak out. Hey, Ginger, nice to see you. You know, this is what narcissism can do to us. It, it puts us into a, uh, a too frequent state of fight or flight. And so this woman, because of these attacks, you know, and I handled it maturely <laughs> and with wisdom as I usually try to and uh, for multiple times, but then it was wonderful because then I did the thing that I hadn't been able to do uh, when I was younger, when I was in these narcissistic relationships. I told her that I was cutting off the situation. You know, when you're dealing with a narcissist, they're so absorbed in their own world, in their own emotions, in their own pain, and in their own internal fight for survival, that uh, they don't have anything left to care about anybody else. And so their needs come first and foremost. Hey, Donna. And the only way to help change a dynamic of a narcissistic relationship is to start to get healthy and to feel healthy enough to set boundaries. Hey Cass, to be in a good enough space that you start saying, no, this is not the experience I wanna have. And because this isn't the, the experience I wanna have, I'm not going to have it. Now as a healer, it's really easy to get sucked into relationships with narcissists because everybody says to us, you know, well, you need to help the people who are most wounded. Hey, Carrie, you need to be the one that um, supports people who are struggling so much. And if you're empathic and compassionate, you end up repeating the cycle over and over and over until you realize, until you come to a, a higher level of knowing that whatever experience the other person is going through, that's their experience to have and whatever experience we're going through that's ours that's our experience to um, figure out and to get ourselves in a good space and it's not about making somebody into a demon or a villain or an evil person because what that does for you is that ruins your health when you allow yourself um, to to have experiences that you don't want to have then our body starts attacking itself and it turns into IBS, which then turns into Crohn's. It turns into heart murmurs, which then turn into a heart attack. It turns into um, arthritis that then continues to bloom until you have degenerative arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. These things of us attacking ourselves because we're trying to keep it all under control is what does the most damage. When we start taking back our ability to be healthy and to be happy and that our experience is the same as the other person experience, just different, you know, when we stop getting emotionally engaged in those things because we're in a really healthy, physically healthy, good place, then we're able to move forward. Now this is my genius, helping people on the health end, the physical health end, but I also have so many wonderful women who are going to be on tonight. And they're going to come at this narcissism thing from the idea of metaphysics. And another one from the idea of, of brain wiring and brain chemistry. And a third one from the idea of self-defense and confidence and uh, the endocannabinoid system. So there is not just one answer to how we deal with narcissists in our life. But what will definitely drag us down is when we stay in that situation of that emotional conflict. I should be nice, I should be a good person, I don't wanna ever behave like the narcissist behaves. I'm gonna tell you one really fun thing. You know, so when I got older, I decided I needed to figure this narcissist thing out. And so I would end up in relationships with people who, you know, were pretty self-absorbed and incapable of being present for anybody but themselves. Hey, Gordana. And I chose these. I chose these because I wanted to figure them out. And what I discovered was it allowed me to reclaim parts and pieces of myself 
you know, parts that I had said, I will never be like that. I would never say that to somebody. I would never behave that way because I know what it feels like and, and I wouldn't want that done to me. And what it did is it opened up my confidence to be able to start to stand up for myself because they pushed my boundaries so much that I finally had to say, I've got to set them. I can't, I can't let myself be cornered anymore. You know, these experiences of being with people who are in different mental states and energetic states and values, what they do is they help you define who you are and who you want to be. That's the wonderful thing. So when this woman came after me in the comments section, and literally she did, she was calling me all sorts of crazy names. When this woman came after me, it helped me determine what I wanted in my life. Hey, Linda. It helped me determine this experience I want, this experience I don't. This is how I want to handle it. This is how I don't want to handle it. It lets you know who you are and who you want to be. And so when we have these people, and sometimes we can't get away from the, from the situation. As I said, there are loved ones, there are family, there are people that you know we're financially dependent upon or um, who have a lot of control or power over our lives. You know, sometimes we're just stuck and there isn't a lot that we can do. But what we can do is we can start to change how we view the world. And one of my favorite things is to start surrounding yourself with people who know what you're going through. Who not only know what you're going through, but know how to get to the other side of it. Know how to heal your IBS and how to heal the, you know, the limiting beliefs that you grew up with and how to help you stop sabotaging yourself. Because when you get healthy, when you get into a good space where you've got energy and strength and support and community, and that's what Patty did for me yesterday. Yesterday, Patty was my community because that's the process. We get dinged, we have an emotional response, and then we pull in all of our tools to help us detox and process through things which we hadn't processed through yet. And that was the wonderful gift that this woman gave me. She brought something up so that I could release the energy, I could detox it out of me, and then I could pull together the tools and the support. And now, I don't ever have to worry again about what my boundary is or, or an experience, having an experience that I don't want to have in that realm with the narcissist because I did the thing that I couldn't do when I was much younger. I said right at the outset, if this is what you're going to do, then this is going to be my response, period, end of story. And uh, because I did that, it stopped the whole thing. It kept me from getting into that dynamic of, should I help them? They're sick or why are they doing this to me? Why do I deserve this? And all of those emotions that came up. You know, when you get healthier, you're able to notice something quickly and you're able to course correct fast. And it starts to change the dynamic because we become most like the five people we spend the most time with. And so if a narcissist is ending up spending time with you and they won't spend time with you if um, they can't victimize you anymore, you know, if that's their intent to just simply victimize people and not ever heal, then when you start being yourself, they start going away. But if they have the intention of wanting to heal, then when they spend time with you, they will become more healed because they will see that compassion. They will see how you set boundaries. They'll see how you stay healthy and take care of yourself. So Tara says, we are the only ones who can voice what we will and will not tolerate and voice our needs. Exactly. And we're not always in the position to do that because maybe we're not strong enough or maybe we think it makes us a bad person or maybe it puts us in danger. You know, it's not always safe or able to voice our needs. But what we can do is we can start by getting our body and our mind into the healthiest place possible. And when that happens, when we have the energy and the support and the community and we've detoxed enough of our past and we've uh, loved ourselves enough, then we're able to say enough, just like I did yesterday, which was fabulous, okay? Yeah, and Tara says sometimes we get attached to the wounded healer mode. Absolutely, that happens to us all the time where it's our identity. Hey, Lorinda, where being a wounded healer, someone who had something big happen to us is what, um, is what defines us. You know, 
I let my abuse when I was a kid define my identity for a long time. That's because I had to work through those feelings and that behavior and the ideas. Hey, Sarah. And it defined me. It, it was my stake in the ground. This happened to me and so hence, um, I need support. But when I started to do the things that got me healthy, hey Jennifer, that got me in a good space, what happened was um, that stopped defining me. Being a wounded healer, being somebody who had the same narcissistic tendencies because I felt so damaged, you know, because I felt so uh, helpless to the situation, when I started to empower myself and even something as small as drinking water or taking CBD oil. You know, when I started to do those things, my past no longer defined me. And I was able to walk into this whole marketing thing, this whole Michigan that, that happened, and, um, and say, okay, here's where I am and this is what I'm not willing to tolerate anymore. And that, to me, was awesome. Because I had a mentor once in my massage therapy program she owned the school, she was awesome, and she worked specifically with sexual abuse survivors many times in part of her practice. And part of what she would do was um, she would help the person recreate the experience that was traumatizing to them, that they had the most emotional charge around, and help them have a different ending. Hey Anthony, nice to see you. And help them have a different ending to the story. Help them realize that uh, they could do something different, that they, were capable of doing something different and when they did something different it started to change the whole dynamic it started to change everything when my friend Patty uh, she was telling a story yesterday about how she was at um, a booth at a fair and she saw her ex-husband who had um, physically abused her coming down the aisle and she started to panic, of course, and freak out, and all of those helpless, awful feelings started to come up again. A little bit like what this woman brought up in me the other day. All of these things came up, but what did she do? She got safe, she got where she could see the environment, she called a friend, and she was surrounded by all these self-defense tools, pepper sprays and tasers, and I don't know if she had tasers, but she definitely had pepper spray. And what it did is that he never came by the booth. He never came by because he could see that she was no longer willing to tolerate this behavior and he didn't want the backlash from it. Now, I don't know if that's what he was thinking, but you know what? That's what a lot of bullies think. That's what a lot of people who are struggling with that. They don't want the work and the effort that's involved with dealing with a strong, confident, loving woman. And that's how we change the situation. And the people who want to evolve in our lives and they spend time with us, they will evolve. And the people who do not want to evolve, they're the ones who go away. Tara says we're worth being treated with mutual respect. Absolutely. And it starts with that. And how do we learn we deserve to be treated with mutual respect? By spending time with people who treat us with respect and who tell us that you are worthy of respect and love, just like our group of women tonight because we know what it's like to be in your shoes. We've all walked our own path through it and we can help you get to the other side. We can help you get to the point where you are healthy enough and happy enough. Thank you, Linda, I appreciate that. And Dana's here too. Where you're healthy enough and happy enough that you can create the life you're looking for. And Tara says that's a point of healing, not blaming ourselves or trying to fix ourselves. It's about understanding. Absolutely, it's about understanding who we are, who the other person is, and figuring out how we're gonna navigate this situation. It's when we bring all of this judgmentalism in, even our own narcissistic behavior, um, when we bring all of that judgmentalism in, it keeps us trapped in that conflict. We're gonna miss you too, Dina, but if you want, I can send you a recording, because we're gonna be doing a recording of the, of the workshop, and uh, so anybody who wants it, let me know. Uh, there'll be a small fee for it, but uh, we'll send it out to you. Just, you know, comment or, or go to the event or send me an email or, so, or PM me or something. It's perfectly fine. So this is how we change. We come together as brilliant, amazing human beings, and we support one another in love and compassion, even the people who are narcissists. We can love them, but from a distance. We can love them, but with boundaries. We can love them from a healthy place. 
And when we do that, it's that love that starts to impact the people around us and teach them this is how you have the best life you want to have. You don't have to stay in your narcissistic behavior pattern in order to be happy. This is another way to be happy, another way to um, be fulfilled and content. And it's our job as those of us who've been through it and, and are part of the healing process like you, it's our job to show people women and men and narcissists and victims and healers and everybody alike this is how you have a healthy world this is how you do it you do it by learning how to love yourself and respect yourself so other people learn how to love and respect themselves too okay so cool if you can join us i'd love to see you tonight uh, there's a small fee to help cover uh, expenses that we've done but it's super affordable and we're gonna have so many great women on and I hope to see you there if you have any questions make sure you PM me or comment and we'll get back to you and as I said if you want a recording we'll let you know so like share love comment comment on other people's comments and it is tonight 615 Central Standard Time and the link is in the copy above and um, it's easy enough to register it's just a little PayPal me and uh, I'll send you out an email with the information once you do that. Okay, cool. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'm so grateful to have such a loving, wonderful community of women and men who know how to have healthy relationships and know how to love one another and love themselves. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. See you tonight. Bye.